I think that lens cap is gone. Last week, I got to work for NFL Films, the opening game of the NFL season and the NFL kickoff experience as well. And it was a great turnout. Ed Sheeran had a performance and everything. I'm not sure if you guys happened to catch that on TV, but it was an awesome time. And in this video, we're gonna do a little walk and talk about the experience there and about working as a production assistant in the television world. We're also gonna try to find some alligators out here on this little trail that I've never been to. So let's get into it. So not being able to work for the NFL last year made me realize, man, a lot's changed in the last four or five years since I first started working there. So let's go ahead and pick the first path here. Let's try this maple trail. So obviously there are limited things that I can actually show you. Like I can't give away any trade secrets or anything like that. But what I can show you is what is already public knowledge. Like let's say you go on Google right now and you type in what camera does NFL films use? Then it'll show you this beast right here. So this camera is the Ari Amira. Since 2014, NFL films has been strictly shooting on the Ari Amira. Up until then, they were actually shooting on 16 millimeter film. Yeah, in 2014, 2015, they actually bought about 30 Ari Amiras and switched over to digital. Before that, they were strictly film. So the Amira is actually a 2K camera that shoots on a super 35 millimeter sensor, ProRes 4444, and it actually is exclusively the camera of the NFL. And a lot of motion pictures and movies that you've seen over the years are shot on this camera as well. That is why the quality is so high and it's the best of the best with the NFL. But the NFL actually did try out a bunch of other cameras back in 2014, and they were looking at Panasonic Sonic and Sony and other cameras, but at the time, Ari just happened to have the absolute least amount of rolling shutter. So for fast whip pan actions and fast moving sports and action, the Amira took the winner as the best camera. So many ferns out here. So I am now using the Rode Wireless Go 2 on the Sony FX3 and seeing how that goes. So for the lenses, we had the Fujinon MK series lenses. They are T 2.9 cine zooms designed for super 35 millimeter sensors. We had both the 19 to 90 millimeter cine zoom and also the 85 to 300. Both are very expensive lenses. The 19 to 90 costs around an average of $30,000. And then the 85 to 300 with the servo zoom comes in at a little bit over $32,000. So that combination of cine glass alone was super heavy in my bag, but it also makes my little FX3 and my 24 to 70 look like a baby's toy. Okay, so we haven't seen any alligators yet. We need to keep moving on this trail because there's a little lookout tower that we're gonna get to and hopefully we'll spot some gators. You know what's in there? Danger. Okay, so that's the gear that we used and everything. And I know a lot of you are here on the channel because we normally do filmmaking gear, tips, and tutorials. Today is a little bit of gear and it's a little bit of tips because that's the main thing I wanna talk about today is being a production assistant on a film set is the best way to network and get yourself into other positions to do what you actually are trying to do with your career. And being a production assistant is the first step to getting your foot in the door where you can network with other creatives, learn the proper film etiquette and how to actually function on a set, what everyone does, everyone's role, because normally you don't wanna to touch anything that's outside of your department. So if you're a camera guy, you don't touch anything to do with the lights or the grip equipment, that is all for them. And if you're a PA, you aren't normally touching the lighting equipment or the camera equipment or any of that stuff unless you're asked to. The PA is actually 
one of the most valuable positions on this set because they are actually able to help every single department. So I know PAs that have gone on to be wardrobe stylists and DPs and grips and sound guys and everything because being on set as a PA will kind of help you figure out which career path or which niche you're gonna take in production because it's not always the one that you think it's gonna be. Like I used to wanna be a director when I was growing up and then I got into production and I actually found out that I actually like shooting better than directing. So that's the path that I ended up on, but everyone has their own path, but I really don't hear any other YouTubers talking about this. So I figured I would at least mention it. You gotta start as a PA. So I know it might be a little disheartening to hear that after you graduate college that you're gonna have to suck up your pride and become a production assistant, maybe get coffee or take lunch orders for the crew or something like that. But just trust in the process and believe me, it's gonna pay off for you, especially if you're using that time to network and meet other professionals in the industry. So if you ask 99% of production professionals, people that work in the industry, they're gonna tell you that they started out as a PA. I'm pretty sure every single grip, every single DP, every single first assistant camera, audio guy, everything you can imagine, 99% of them start out in the industry as a PA, that is a production assistant. Some jobs you might be getting coffee and taking food orders for the crew. Sometimes you might be a camera PA like I am for the NFL, where you're switching lenses and changing media and stuff like that. But all in all, being a production assistant, you kind of get your hands involved in every department on the film set. You can help out the wardrobe stylist if you want to learn wardrobe. You can help out the sound guy if you want to learn audio you can help out the camera guys if you want to learn camera and you can help out grip and lighting if you want to be g and &E. so with that being said that makes production assistants probably the most valuable player on the set so it's been about five years since I first started working with the NFL and a lot's changed over that course of time. I actually started working with the NFL just shortly after I graduated in 2015 for television production and cinema. And it was one of my first big jobs and it gave me the opportunity to go in and network and meet other people in the industry. And it actually got me future jobs as well. So once I first started working as a PA, I actually met some people on that film set with NFL that brought me on to another shoot to work as a VTR, a video playback on a Nissan commercial. And I got to ride on a process trailer with Tim Tebow and we were shooting a commercial for the Nissan Rogue. And it was awesome. And that's all because I took a position as a PA with the NFL. And I recommend taking a position as a PA with any company because that's how you just get your foot in the door and make the connections you need to move forward in your career. So I really wanted to touch on this today because because I don't hear a lot of YouTubers talking about it because most YouTubers, you know, they start their YouTube career and they do that and that takes over as their job and they just get a couple freelance jobs every now and then, you know, something like that. But I'm somebody that's the opposite. I'm somebody that tried to move to Florida, tried to make it as a freelancer for three years, didn't get enough clients and I decided, man, I can't get a good steady paying job with insurance and everything until I go back to school. So that's exactly what I did. I went back to UCF in Florida for two years and got my bachelor's degree in television production and film and it was honestly the best decision I've ever made. It actually got me acquainted with all the newest technology and procedures going on on actual professional film sets. So it actually got me ready because some of the professors had been on movies before. I had a professor that was a producer on A Nightmare on Elm Street and a lot of other really cool movies back in the 90s and 80s. So just being there with the experience and around other students and everything really grew my career entering film festivals all that kind of stuff so I highly recommend going to school I know this path isn't for everyone I used to think school was a scam for years and that's why I actually quit for three years after I got my associate's degree because I thought I could just make it as a freelancer but once I went back to school and got my degree I feel like my career really took off since then it took about six months to start landing my first good jobs and then from that point it took off but the fact is that uh, if you get in there and start as a PA and just work your way up to the bigger jobs and network along the way, then you'll be good to go. All right, we found some gators. There's one right there. There's another one right there. 
and another one right there. That I think that lens cap is gone. <laughs> Mama showed up quick when that lens cap went in. Yikes. All right, we have made it to our final destination. We finally got to see some little baby gators and the big mama popped out. I uh, didn't want to say it down there, but I feel bad for the guy down there because he dropped his lens hood for his 70 to 200, I think he had, a cannon. He dropped it down in the water and mama gator came popping out. All right guys, that does it for me today. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. And if you guys are enjoying content like this, talking about behind the scenes and getting into production and things like that, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Shoot for the stars and I will see you guys very soon in the next video.